I'm Device from Astralis and welcome to Foreign's YouTube channel. It's a joke free song. This current lineup of Astralis obviously had their own era in Counter-Strike, arguably the best era ever, running from when they became the number one team. It was in spring of 2018, right through to basically the beginning of the spring of 2019. But at that point in time, they lost their era. They lost it by not attending enough of the big events, therefore letting other people win them. They lost to Ents directly in the Blast Madrid final when they were largely only attending Blast events. Then they lost to Team Liquid and saw Team Liquid would win most of the tournaments of the summer. Now, there was certainly a silly narrative perpetuated by some, some to this day. More recently, I even saw someone saying it after they won the Blast Global Final. Like, oh, people said your era was over. Their era was over. Like, the idea that it continued because they won the major, Star Ladder Berlin, and beyond that doesn't make any sense at all because winning zero tournaments and making zero finals for a five-month span means by definition you did not dominate that period. Similarly, if you win, taking when they won the major, one title in a fucking eight tournament span, how are you the dominant force? Especially in the same period where someone else won like six or seven titles. But you know what? It's now start time we can have a different discussion, which is, is Astralis ramping up into a potential second era, their next era, as it were? Because if you take Star Ladder Berlin, September onwards, they won Star Ladder, the major. They came second at ESL1 New York. They came top four at DreamHack Masters Malmo. Yeah, they had fourth place at Blast, but because of fuck, it was best of ones. Then they won IEM f uh, 14 Beijing without losing a map, by the way. They won e ECS Season 8 Finals, so there's back-to-back -back titles. They came top four at EPL Season 10 Finals, and then they finished up the year winning the Blast Global Finals without losing a single series, also undefeated, winning every single fucking map. So you look at this performance, right? Four titles, including a major. Five finals, Big time stuff. We're talking about an eight tournament span. And in seven tournaments, they, I'm excluding the blast one here, which doesn't really fucking matter, does it? They either won the event four times or the other three times they lost to the winner. They lost to Evil Geniuses, Mouse Sports, Fnatic. These are the teams that went on to win the championship. In terms of the top fours, they had eight in a row in this time period, if you count the blast one as well. Though that one probably shouldn't count. So seven in a row, let's say. Now, here's the thing. If we want to talk about majors and we want to talk about finals, titles, all the different metrics by which we define eras. I did a video on defining eras previously when Team Liquid was on the cusp of doing it themselves, but failed to because they didn't win the major. So you look at all different metrics in terms of having majors, like typically, except for NIP, every other team that's a, an era-defined team has a major. Well, this Astralis line already has one, Star Ladder Berlin. No, don't say, well, they have three, Darren, yeah, but they have two and up three in a row. Like, you're ignoring the point about an era is a specific period of time, not your entire accomplishments combined. So having one major, that's already enough to get you in this discussion. And you look at it, Nip didn't have one. Obviously, there were no majors back then. So yeah, they're absolutely in the discussion. With that said, the Astralis team that won the E-League Atlanta in early 2017 also had a major and didn't get that status. Envious had a major. LDLC had a major. They didn't get that status. Gambit had a major. Obviously, that's not enough entirely, but it's a nice initial qualifying criteria. criterion. Then you go to the number of finals they played in. They beat in five finals. That's big time shit. Like that would already make you top eight out of all the teams I listed in that video who would like all time potential era teams that will put you top five already. So you don't need many more finals before you'll be top four, top three. That's getting pretty legit. In terms of titles won, they've won four titles. Okay, that's not that crazy, actually. If you look at the other teams that had potential eras, like Team Liquid won more than that during their attempt at an era, right? FaZe Clan won a similar amount of titles. So that isn't enough quite yet. You probably need at least, I'd say, one or two more titles along with some more finals. In terms of top fours, they've actually already got a pretty decent amount. They've got eight already in this particular period, that would already put you top four on my like greatest list of teams that were competing for the all. So any more, and let's face it, right now, Astralis are absolute lock to get at least a few more top four finishes with this particular lineup in this climate. So you would imagine that's going to go to double digits, 10, 11, maybe you can go high, higher than that. If we're talking about not having to win the tournament, but getting all the top fours. With that said, you have to get titles and files and top fours at the same time if you want to get a secure era. If you don't win titles, it doesn't really fucking matter ultimately after two or three events, right? Right. In terms of series one in a row, 
They have nine at the moment. I mean, they lost that, obviously, when they lost to Mouse Spots at EPL. Like, that in itself, of my great list, ties them for third all time with the previous era Estrella. So that's already a very, very positive sign. That shows that you were, you were very, very strong and dominant in your period. I mean, not the same craziness as, like, Liquid winning 22 or NIP winning 24 in a row, or the NIPs was against less competition. Liquids is actually crazy, but like, they don't have their own era. Debatable on that one, right? So if you want to contrast them, okay, the NIP team that had an era, well, they have way less titles and way less finals, but they have a major, okay. Still put NIP ahead of them on that one. You have Fnatic, the one that went back to back in majors, so they've got an extra major, they've got more titles, more finals, more top fours. Okay, you've got a few to go to beat them, but not, still not crazy off. SK, I already said, actually, if people don't want to give Team Liquid an era, because I don't know if just winning two majors is enough. I actually feel like that SK team should probably be disqualified from their era now. Now that we look back on it, they accomplished so little outside of it. In every other metric, they were so poor. So I think actually this Astralis Slam's already done more than that particular team. Then in terms of Astralis last, well, not last year now, 2018 at this point in time, the one that had its own era. Well, obviously you have less majors because that team won two majors in a row. They obviously won way more titles, more series. Not a uh, similar amount of series in a row, way more finals, top four. So you're a ways off that one. But if you want to slot in as the 15th to have an era off, we're taking SK out the fourth. It's already close. I don't think you need much more to go before you can make a very good case for it. So listen, the problem is this. It's going to be really difficult to have an era like that. Like just look at the variety of teams that can beat them. Evil Geniuses has done it a whole bunch of times. Admittedly, not as much more recently. Team Liquid, this lineup has done it in the past, although yes, they've been losing all the time for like the last, what, six times or something, so that's not looking as likely, but even so, they have one good day, it can happen. Fnatic's obviously beaten them previously, that's an interesting aspect because there's such a bizarre stylistic counter to them, you'd think Astralis should beat them, but actually some of that chaos almost fucks up Astralis's pattern. Mouse Sports obviously just recently did it. We know Carrigan has an epic legacy of beating Astralis in his team, and now they're a top team. That's certainly an interesting wrinkle to throw into the mix there. Then there's all the other teams that haven't done it yet, but you figure on the right day they could. Like, Na'Vi has the mad firepower to go and do it, right? Vitality has Zewu and potentially slightly improved style. They're going to lack, certainly, in his mouse map pool. I don't think the 100 Thieves can probably do it. That's probably pushing the bar too far on that one. And you look at some of the other squads in the top 10, yeah, they're not going to do it. But it is a very competitive top 10. And so that's part of the problem is how the bracket shakes out when you play people is going to be essential. Because at the moment, you'll be getting Team Liquid all the time you need them. But if you get a mouse swap to Fnatic, suddenly Team Liquid wins a title or two, or EG wins a title or two, or Mouse wins a couple of more titles because you get the wrong opponent, the wrong bracket draw, then your ear is done already like it's over with that said you would bet on this team to come top four at any tournament they play at now you'd bet on them probably make the final with the right bracket even the teams that can beat them eg fanatic mass spot you'd still put astralis as the favorite right now in terms of map pool style consistency in terms of overall better players i doubt there's a better team at the moment in the scene that's debatable for certain other squads. So right now, you'd probably say that actually Astralis has got a chance to do this second area. It's very much on the table. It's going to be tougher. I'd actually say if they do it this time, it's not more impressive than the last era because the last era was so incredible, just stats-wise, dominance, like barely even giving up double-digit round wins, never getting beaten and swept except like three times ever or something until they lost it. Like crazy stuff. You'll never be impressive in that sense but it would be more impressive in the sense of like how competitive it is and the fact that people saw that era and the fact that all that bullshit like we've well, been studied and stuff yeah you've been studied to the ends of the earth you're even doing it right now when every other team's crying about being burned out in the scene eg for like oh we're so burned out we can't go home Australia's still winning everything of course we're winning tournaments without dropping a fucking map without losing a series like this team is i mean they're just the absolute best to ever play the game the question is can they have a second period in which they totally dominate the moment they're like let's say in terms of dominance factor they're at like 75% status and the last Astralis was at 95% so they've still got a ways to go but even at this particular rate I don't think it's I think you're talking like three months until they could potentially with like one or two more titles couple more finals few top fours that's like an era right there and that would be a very legitimate era to count in the same way as I thought actually the Astralis of late 2016 to early 2017 the first line up with Glaive when they had Kirby I thought that team was close enough to a mid uh, era actually I think if they'd have won that Star Series tournament and then continued with top fours and finals like that's where I could have seen granting them that era in particular although yes certainly there are other teams with eras that are much much better than that and have, have greatness that supersedes it as indeed the Australia Slam with Magus did go on to do later on so 
I think that's the cool aspect here. Is let's forget the idea of whether it continued. It didn't. By any metric or definition, that's just stupidity and whack interviewing. But in this particular case, let's talk about this because we can start looking towards what will it take for them to get their next era? What do other people think of that? What would they define as their era and what do they lack? Because if we can set the targets, then if they hit them, we can say they did it. And if they didn't, we can have a cool talk about why they didn't make the second era. This video was kindly supported by Alexander Rao, Blunt Smoking Anus Destroyer, Dane Koskley, Dean Tanglas, Ho Chi Mao, J Dobbs, Nate D O Double G, Peter the Feeder, Tobias Bernasconi, and a special thanks goes out to Jerky's Minion and Mohammed Al Abdul Razak. Do you want to suggest a topic or a guest for my content? Maybe you'd like to ask me a question in my monthly Patreon AMA. Would you like teasers on upcoming content that I'm doing? Maybe you want to take part in a discussion directly with me? Well, if so, then put your money where your mouth is and join the Scaluminati today at the Patreon link in the description below.